What's up, Nerdgenic Nation, and welcome to History Of. I'm your host and resident superhero nerd, Aaron Waller, and this is the series where we do a deep dive into various comic book characters, both heroes and villains, and give a little bit more insight as to who they are and why they do what they do. And in today's video, we're talking about a character that's been in the MCU for quite some time, but she's about to get a total new step up and a whole new power set in Thor Love and Thunder, and that's Jane Foster. Jane Foster was created by the all-star tag team of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and first debuted in Journey into Mystery number 84 in 1960. Jane Foster experienced trauma young when her mother died of cancer at the age of nine. She would primarily be raised by her father who encouraged her as much as possible and worked two jobs to get her through medical school until he suffered a heart attack later in life. After becoming a nurse, Jane would work under Dr. Donald Blake, a young and power stripped Thor pulling his own rendition of Clark Kent's Superman dual identities. Jane would be infatuated with the power of Thor and unbeknownst to her be working side by side with his alter ego. Loki would then hypnotize Jane and give her secret commands and confront Thor and the two would battle it out in Central Park. Jane would be involved still under Loki's hypnosis and Thor would have to choose to save her and briefly turn back into Blake and allow Loki to escape and take over New York. Thor would then want to tell Jane of his identity but Odin contacted him and advised him not to. Later after still trying to convince his father, Odin would decide that if Jane proved herself to be brave, he would make her immortal and allow her to marry Thor. But of course, Thor being Thor, he would try and tell her his identity anyway, but he was stopped by the villains Mr. Hyde and Cobra, to which Jane would be caught in an explosion and be near death before being saved by Odin. I guess it's good to have friends in high places. Eventually, Thor would tell Jane of his true identity, to which she would flee America and start working with the High Evolutionary. Thor would then take Jane to Asgard, a place forbidden to mortals, and beg his father to allow them to marry, to which Odin then transformed her into an Asgardian and gave her superhuman powers. Again, Again, good friends, high places. She wouldn't have them for long, however, as Odin felt she was too confused and bewildered at her abilities and took her powers away, stripped her of her memories of Asgard, and then sent her back to Earth to work for another doctor with whom she would end up falling in love with. Thor would then try and rekindle his relationship with Lady Sif during this time, but she would steal a magical staff and become merged with Jane. This would allow Jane to regain her memories and fall in love with Thor all over again, while also giving her the abilities of Lady Sif and the Asgardians, but a lot more confidently. Thor and Jane would take down the villain Ulic and become inseparable on various missions. It will later turn out that Lady Sif's essence was in another dimension, thus giving Jane the ability to control the body. They would eventually free her and separate Sif and Foster, allowing Jane to return to Earth and marry the man doctor that she had previously fallen in love with. She would go on to have a child, Jimmy, and become a doctor herself while working alongside heroes and even treating them during Civil War as she was sided with the secret Avengers, aka Team Cap. I knew there was a reason why I liked Jane. Later after hearing the return of Blake aka Thor, Jane would divorce her husband and lose custody of her child. She would then also discover Lady Sif's spirit was reborn in a body of a dying cancer patient and they would restore her just before the patient died. And after which Jane would go to Broxton, Oklahoma where the city of Asgard was erected and open a medical practice. During Thor God of Thunder while Thor was fighting Gore the God Butcher, Jane herself would be diagnosed with breast cancer and accept Thor's invitation to represent Earth aka Midgard at the Congress of Worlds. During a battle, Thor would lose his ability to wield Mjolnir and the hammer would be stranded and left on the moon. That is, until it began calling to Jane. She would then ask Heimdall to take her to the hammer and Jane would be able to pick it up and immediately gain the powers of Thor and become immediately stronger. She would then soon find herself in the middle of the Frost Giants and the Accursed War. Thor would then track down Jane and demand the return of his hammer before realizing that it had a new owner and he never even realized that it was Jane who had the possession of Mjolnir. To which he would then just accept this new owner and then go by the name of Odinson. Jane as Thor would then fight Kurl Borson who wielded the destroyer armor, and with the help of an army of women who could be Thor's new identity, they were able to force the destroyer to retreat and Jane's identity would continue to remain a secret from everyone. Then during Secret Wars, she would be one of the few heroes to survive the end of the multiverse and awaken in Battleworld, the assembled new world run by Doctor Doom eight years later. With the help of Doctor Strange, she would be transported across the planet and sacrifice himself to which she would later avenge by turning the tide of Doom's army against him and help bring down the castle to restore the multiverse. And once restored, Jane would remain an Asgardian senator in the Congress of Worlds and remain Thor and protect the realms, having to become involved in multi-realm war and also fight various versions of Loki. Eventually though, she would return to Earth for a time and become a member of the Avengers, to which still no one knew her secret
secret identity until Sam Wilson, the new Captain America, sees her transform and stays with her when she needs someone to talk to during her chemotherapy treatments. Despite her illness though, Jane would still suit up and join the fight when Hydra took over the capital. During this battle, however, Mjolnir would be altered to become enchanted to the strongest, not necessarily the most worthy, and she would lose the hammer for a time and be sent to another dimension. Once she awoke, she would be helped by a farmer, Helka, who would take her in and help her attempt to return home. She even made Jane a replacement hammer for the time being. She would go on to defeat a monster and return home and still manage to help the siege of the capital and even get back Mjolnir. Unfortunately though, all progress with chemotherapy would become lost when transforming into Thor, as it purged all toxins from her body but it left the cancer as it was a part of her body. She would then begin transforming into Thor more and more often as her cancer progressed, and she would be given the bad news by Doctor Strange that if she transformed into Thor a final time, she would die. This would force Jane to remain human for her own health. That is until Mangog would send the city of Asgard flying toward the sun for revenge to which she had no choice but to turn into Thor. She would put up her best efforts but be forced to chain Mangog to Mjolnir and hurl it toward the sun where he could not escape. In doing so, she reverts back to her human form and shared a final kiss with Odinson before dying. Talk about going out like a hero. Her soul would be hesitant at the gates of Valhalla as Odinson tried to bring her back to life and is able to do so with Odin's help. Once revived, Jane would then focus all her time and attention towards chemotherapy as she could no longer possess the power of Thor to help her and focused on her health while the power was restored to Odinson. Though she would still help when able, such as when Malekith invaded Earth, and she even became the All-Mother briefly to defend Earth. She would once again transform into Thor, however, after picking up the broken remains of the Ultimate Universe's Mjolnir and assist Thor along with his past and future counterparts to rescue Odin and Frigga from Malekith. Her already fragile Mjolnir would break with a blow to King Laufey during a battle, but the pieces would recombine into a brace on her arm called the Underjar, the All Weapon, which would later summon the spirits of Brunhilde and the other Valkyries and Jane would herself accept and become a Valkyrie. Now Jane Foster has also been in other mediums besides comics including having minor appearances in a variety of Marvel mobile games and as a supporting character in animated features like the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes and Avengers Secret Wars. But she's most famously known for being portrayed by Natalie Portman in the MCU since 2011's Thor and will be getting to wield Mjolnir as Thor herself in the fourth Thor film, Thor Love and Thunder. Now in terms of powers and abilities, Jane is just your run-of-the-mill human. Though she is extremely intelligent as she's not only a nurse but also a medical doctor, that is until she gets the powers of Thor. But besides possessing the typical Thor powers, when she becomes a Valkyrie, she attains the powers of Asgardians which includes superior strength, speed, vision, flight, depth perception, and mystical teleportation. And now for my favorite segment here on History of the Recommended Reading, where I give you a list of comic books where you can get to know Jane just a little bit better and even see her in action. First up, we have Journey into Mystery number 84, which was of course her first appearance and always a great place to start. Up next, we have What If number 10, which is where Jane becomes Thor before she would ever get to officially wield the hammer. Next, I would recommend checking out Thor number one from 2014. This is where Jane would become Thor as she is dying from cancer and desperately need the powers. For some top tier action of Jane as Thor though, I would check out Thor's number four, which has her fighting in battle worlds with variants. Or check out Mighty Thor number 705, which is Jane's possible ending, but as she's weak, makes the decision to become Thor to save Asgard. But if you want to see her in action after being Thor in his Valkyrie, Valkyrie number one is definitely the best place to start. Though if you are looking for a little bit different of a story, Thor the Mighty Avenger number one is a totally different retelling of Jane's origins from her perspective starting with her meeting Thor. So those are some of the things you need to know about Jane Foster. Was there anything in this video you may not have known otherwise? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, be sure to leave me any suggestions to any characters you would like to see on this series. Your suggestion just might become next week's video. But also while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you miss out on any future videos from me or the rest of the Nerdgenic team. And also be sure to follow us across all social media platforms at Nerdgenic so you miss out on any special news, announcements, or articles at Nerdgenic.com. But if you want to support this channel even more and make sure we get even better, check out the Patreon link down in the description. But if you want even more video content from us in the meantime, be sure to check out these videos on screen, like my recent video talking about the DC showcase Constantine House of mystery movie, which did leave a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, or you can check out the rest of the history of characters in this playlist right over here. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, we really do appreciate it, and we hope to see you in the next video.